Hey everybody, it's me, John, here with another video. Hope you're having a great Tuesday, April 25th, 2017, and I'm really happy that this topic is coming up on Case Cracked. I had many of you sending me information. I was tracking this case, getting ready to do a brain scratch on it once a lot of the major media died down. Um, fortunately, we don't need to do that because this case has officially been cracked. So with all that being said, let's jump into the case of Tad Cummins and Elizabeth Thomas. Tad Cummins was a 50-year-old married health science teacher at Kolioka Unit School in Maury County, Tennessee. In his third period class was a 15-year-old student named Mary Catherine Elizabeth Thomas, but she went simply by Elizabeth. On January 23rd of 2017, a 12-year-old student sees Tad give Elizabeth Thomas a, quote, romantic peck. The school contacted the sheriff's department to report the inappropriate contact. Detectives interviewed the student that witnessed the contact. The student said that they and another student actually confronted Tad before reporting it to school officials, and that Tad rambled on and on about how much he loved his wife, but indicated Elizabeth Thomas sometimes went to church with him and his wife and that she had a troubled past. Elizabeth was interviewed and admits that she was in the classroom on January 23rd, but denied that any kiss took place. Uh, Tad is issued an order to avoid contact with Elizabeth and she is removed from his third period class. On February 3rd, Elizabeth is in Tad's classroom for approximately 30 minutes. Three days later, Tad Cummins is suspended from his teaching position. Tad then takes out a loan for $4,500 to supposedly help him float the bills while he's suspended without pay. On March 13th of 2017, Tad tells his wife Jill that he needs to borrow her Nissan Rogue for a job interview at the Williamson County Medical Center. Later that night, she finds a note at home saying that he's actually traveling to the Washington DC area to clear his head and he asks her not to contact police. Elizabeth Thomas's father does contact police when she doesn't arrive home on the evening of March 13th, 2017. And then Tad's wife, Jill, winds up contacting police the following day on the 14th with some disturbing details. He took the money from the loan, clothes, and two handguns with him. Investigators would also learn that Tad had recently picked up two refills on his prescription for Cialis, a medication that is used to treat erectile dysfunction. He also made a two-night hotel reservation at a Super 8 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, for a room with only one bed. It seems like Tad had a very specific plan in mind for what he was going to do that first weekend. But the question of did Elizabeth go willingly or not is still a tough one to answer. On March 14th, the school officially terminated Tad Cummins. He would be listed as one of Tennessee's most wanted fugitives and an Amber Alert would be issued. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation would join to assist on the case. TBI investigators would also find that Tad had searched on the terms teenage marriage before he disappeared. Elizabeth also changed her Instagram profile to state wife. Tad asked an employee at the Oklahoma City Super 8 Hotel where was the nearest Walmart, and then footage of him was found at that location. They moved to another hotel in a different part of Oklahoma and were seen together at another Walmart, also caught by surveillance footage. This time, they had purchased women's razors, chocolates, and KY jelly a lubricant commonly used for sexual intercourse. There would be no further confirmed sightings of them after this, as a nationwide media blitz on the case ramped up and footage of them at Walmart was literally being spread across the nation. With proof that this was now a case moving across state lines, the FBI would also get involved, but it would all come down to a cabin rental groundskeeper in Northern California, over 2,400 miles away from Kolioka. Griffin Berry had actually spent some time with the couple, who told him that they had lost their home in a fire and used fake names. Tad called himself John, saying he was only 44, and Elizabeth was now called Joanna and said that she was 22. John and Joanna 
were supposedly from Colorado. They had supposedly gotten recently married and they were headed to Black Bear Ranch Commune with only 10 bucks left in their pocket. Griffin Berry gave them $40 cash and some gas to help them get there. Black Bear Ranch in Cecilville, California is close to the Oregon border. It's an 80 acre intentional community. It was founded in 1968 with the slogan, free land for free people. Black Bear Ranch was a subject of the 2005 documentary Commune and has approximately 40 residents. However, it didn't seem to go too well for John and Joanna when they arrived there. Uh, they were back within two days and Griffin Berry was offering them a 12 foot by 12 foot cabin to stay in as long as John would help Griffin build a rock wall. Griffin wasn't familiar with the case, but a friendly neighbor was noticing several red flags and told Griffin about them. Their car, a Nissan Rogue, had no license plates. John would usually speak for Joanna and did his best to keep her separated from everyone else. She would literally whisper into his ear and he would tell others what she had said. Griffin then saw the details of the Amber Alert and knew it was the couple that was being looked for. They initially considered confronting the couple and trying to contain them, but opted not to due to Tad's status of being potentially armed and dangerous. They contacted local sheriffs who were two hours away, but they did immediately come out and a coordinated effort to catch Tad Cummins was put into play. Griffin even assisted as he was the prompt for Tad to come out and start working for the day. Police immediately apprehended him and found Elizabeth nearby. It's reported that Tad went peacefully, even stating that he was glad it was all over. Authorities say that Elizabeth Thomas was laughing and crying at the same time and appeared healthy and unharmed, but they were concerned about her state of mind and emotional well-being. She's being treated by experts, and some people believe she has a long road ahead of her in terms of recovering and truly understanding what she's gone through. On April 21st of 2017, Elizabeth was reunited with her family. Tad Cummins is facing federal charges of transporting a minor across state lines with a minimum sentence of 10 years, as well as charges of sexual contact with a minor and aggravated kidnapping. The FBI has taken him into federal custody as their charges have jurisdiction over the local charges and he's now awaiting a series of upcoming court dates. Tad is also likely to learn of another surprise. The wife he left behind, Jill, who initially cried out publicly for him to return and make amends with his horrible decision, has since filed for divorce after 31 years of marriage. So, did Elizabeth Thomas want to go with him or not? A court petition was filed by Elizabeth's family saying that Tad was grooming her for months. It states that she was forced to go out with him or face repercussions at school. It also states that she told friends she was scared of him and that she felt in over her head. It also talks about an incident that took place where he showed up at her fast food job and she asked another employee to tell him that she wasn't there while she hid from him. At the age of 15, the question of did she want to or not doesn't necessarily matter. In Tennessee, the age of consent is 18, though there is a Romeo and Juliet law stating that an exemption could be made if they were close together in age. Obviously, with him being 50 and her being 15, this case doesn't qualify for that. Case cracked, but um, obviously some repercussions that everyone is going to have to deal with in this. Uh, of course, I feel terrible for the wife, Jill, and um, I'm kind of proud of her for making that decision to go ahead and file for divorce even before they were found. So she was already on the, on the track to, to get this done. I think that was um, really brave of her to, to be able to do that. And Elizabeth's family um, seemed to have a big piece of work in terms of getting these court petitions filed and being the initial catalyst for them when they went missing. So it seems like she has a father that cares about her a lot. Uh, if you look into this case, there is some dialogue about her home life. I'm not sure if it was 
uh, an excellent upbringing by some people's standards. Uh, I believe she has nine siblings, so it may be that um, it was easy for someone that was giving her attention to kind of woo her away or groom her in that way. Um, and Tad's backstory uh, isn't the most solid either. A couple of bumps, particularly when he was younger, um, but you know, nothing that would clearly show that he would be capable of doing something like this. And I think ultimately, the best outcome is that they were found before something really tragic or bad could have happened. For example, if she eventually came to her own decision about not wanting to be with him on this trip or something like that, um, knowing that he took weapons with him, uh, you have to wonder how that could have played out in a much different way, and I'm very, very happy that that did not turn out to be the case. Uh, this seems beyond a midlife crisis. You know, the, the activity that he did leading up to this, um, this was pretty well staged, pretty well planned. Um, who knows if there was another ending in this that he could have had in mind. I'm just very, very thankful that the groundskeeper did the right thing, notified the authorities, and the authorities did an excellent job in terms of getting this shut down uh, with everyone um, being safe and brought in appropriately. So. Thank you all so much for joining me here on Case Cracked. I hope you're having a great week, and I'll catch you right back here on the Lord Nerds channel.